is uh, World Communion Sunday, but before we get started in on that, uh, we have a visitor here today that's uh, uh, Eddie Davis is going to come talk to us here in just a few minutes about uh, the Gideons. Um, but before I get into that, uh, I want to talk about something. If you recall, last week I spoke specifically about bold prayers. And I've been praying prayers like this over the last two or three weeks where God would put people in your lives where you would have to share the good news of Christ with them, that you would have to pray with them. Do you remember that? And, and I know God's been answering, I know the Lord's been answering because I've got to hear these stories. I got to hear people call me up or they'll meet me somewhere and they'll say, you, 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 let me tell you the story. You know, you prayed specifically for the church that we would be have people put in our lives where God would use us to pray for that person right there in their presence with them. And it's been happening. It's been happening. I prayed that again last week and I heard stories all week of how people, how God, excuse me, has put people in your lives where one, you didn't say, hey, let, let me get you in touch with the preacher. You said, hey, let me pray with you right now. And I've got to hear all these stories. I was going home last week. I was driving home after church. And I remember thinking about this message that I preached last week and thinking about these bold prayers. And I'm, I'm asking us, I'm asking me, I'm asking the church to start praying. And I'm thinking about the message, thinking about your stories. And as I'm driving, I don't have the radio on, as I'm driving, um, and I'm thinking about these bold prayers and, and, and asking God to put people in our lives where we can make a difference. He says, what about now? And I'm thinking, what, what, what do you mean, what about now? He's, you're praying for bold prayers, but what about now? What about right now? And I'm like, Lord, I'm driving down the road. I, I just left church. We just finished church. I'm heading home. What do you mean, what about now? How, is some, how am I going to pray for you to put somebody in my life right here and right now when I'm driving down the road? And he said, you ask. <laughs> and I'm like, all right. So I sincerely prayed as I'm driving down the road, and I didn't shut my eyes. As I'm driving down the road and I'm praying, Lord, put somebody in my path today. Lord, put somebody in my path today that I can talk to, that I can witness to that I can pray for. And I didn't get the prayer out. I didn't even get it out and a name popped in. Lord laid a name on my heart. And I'm thinking, Lord, I haven't talked to that person. I haven't seen that person. Probably in over a year. And I'm thinking, really? And the name just over and over again. And I was like, all right. And I was almost, if you know where I live, I'm on Mount Carmel Road, so I'm almost to the road to turn up to go home. I said, all right. And I turned around, and I drove to this person's home. And I'm like, all right. And I just walk up to the door, and I start knocking on the door. I'm like, Holy Spirit, lead. Holy Spirit, lead. I don't know what, I don't know. Um, had an opportunity to talk with this person, hug on this person, have a conversation with this person, and then pray for this person. I don't know what they had going on in their life. God did. God knew. I don't know what was going on or why God even needed me to do that. He just needed me to be obedient. And as I left the house and I'm driving home, the Lord said, yes, yes, pray those bold prayers where you, I'm going to put somebody in your life, but don't ever forget that you've got to take it to them. Don't forget that we have to have a bold and also take it to them. And I couldn't help but think about this today when I think about the Gideons and what their ministry is and what they're doing. Where they're not just waiting for somebody to come to them. No, they're taking it out, which is the bold prayer that we also need to have for this church. I'm going to ask Eddie to come forward and share with us just a little bit um, about the Gideons here locally, what they're doing, what they're accomplishing um, after Eddie gets done speaking, we are going to have a take a love offering for the Gideons. And if you want to write a check, you can make it out to Gideons or Gideons International. Do not make it out to the church. We'll take it up. Um, we'll make sure that we get it to, to Eddie. Um, but don't write it to us. Do write it to Gideons or Gideons International. Eddie, 
phone up, brother. And tell us all about how the Lord's working in the giving. Thank you. Imagine this situation. You're 13 years old and your parents are atheists and alcoholics. One or the other is bad enough. But John Price, 13 years old, parents were both atheists and alcoholics. He was sitting in a hotel room in Miami, Florida one night. His mother was passed out on the bed. His daddy had gone bar hopping in town, and he was bored. He had watched all the TV he wanted to watch, so he started looking through the drawers, checking things out. Well, he found a Bible, one like this, a Gideon Place Bible. His parents had told him not to ever open it because it was full of fairy tales. But just like any kid, if you're told not to do something, you're probably going to do it. So he did. And he opened it up, and it fell on Psalm 2710. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. He snapped it shut. He said, how does this book know me? My mother and father, the Lord will take care of me. When he left, he took the Bible with him. And every night, when he possibly could, without his parents knowing it, he would read the Bible. He would read it. And he realized that something was missing in his life. And I guess this song that we just heard, a king like this, has there ever been another king like this? He realized he needed Jesus in his life. He gave his life to Jesus because of a Gideon Place Bible and not listening to his parents. I'm not sure what happened to his parents, but I do know that John K. Price III is serving as a pastor in Clintonwood, Virginia. And he is very thankful to the Gideons and to the church that made it possible for the Gideons to put that Bible in that hotel room on that night. Another interesting situation about a Gideon Place Bible. The gentleman says, the first time my wife and I discovered a Gideon Place Bible in a hotel was in the USA. We were doing some traveling and we looked around and found the Bible in the drawer. They weren't looking for Jesus. They were kind of lost. They were having marital problems. They didn't have any children. They were doing some traveling, but they just casually looked at the Bible a little bit. But the next time they were in France, the wife wondered, I wonder if the French do the same thing as the people in the U.S. and put Bibles in the hotel room. Sure enough, French Gideons had placed a Bible in that motel room. Well, they started reading it, and they had a lot of, like I said, a lot of problems. And again, they realized something was missing. Jesus was working on them because of the Gideon Place Bible. Well, they decided they needed more information, so they did call the local Gideons, and they were able to get a Bible of their own. They could have taken the one in the hotel. Happens all the time, which is perfectly fine. We'll put another one in there. They are very thankful 
and say, God bless the Gideons for making it possible. Well, you may ask, who are these Gideons? Well, we're Christian business and professional men, an extended missionary arm of your church. And we're also members of local churches. And you have, you have a couple Gideons in your church, J.R. and Garfield. They're doing a great job with us, and we're glad to have them. But there's about 300,000 men and women around the world working with the Gideons in about 200 countries. And you know what? Last year alone, we distributed and gave out over 89 million copies of God's Word in 200 countries. And I mentioned that the Bibles were in the French. Well, we print in 108 different languages. That's a lot of different Bibles to print. What is our objective? Winning others to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Gideon started in 1898. They started giving out scriptures in Montana. And in 1916, they started giving them out in hospitals. The Gideons are best known for the work of the Hotel Place Bibles. We all agree that it's important to have the Word of God. And a lot of people have it, but they don't use it. A lot of people want it and can't get it. That's where the Gideons come in around the world. And I'd like to say that since the Gideons started, we have given out over 2.7 billion copies of God's Word. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Y'all make it possible. And I'd like to share this with you. This young lady says, my name is Amy. I came to know Jesus and was called to be a missionary through a Gideon Place Bible. She grew up in a Christian home, but she never really read the Word. When she was young, she was given a Gideon Place New Testament, one of the small versions, but she didn't use it, didn't read it. For some reason, when she did get to read it, it opened, she opened it up to John 3.3 3, that said, Except a man be born again, he cannot be, cannot see the kingdom of God. She read that verse over and over and over and realized she needed to be born again. She needed Jesus in her life. Later, when she graduated from high school, she got another Gideon New Testament. Well, it's not a, it's a Gideon Place New Testament. And she kept reading and reading and reading. And you know, <coughs> through the Gideons that had an impact in her life, she prayed and prayed. And she became a music missionary, which I've never heard of. I've heard of missionaries, but she was a music missionary for seven and a half years and traveled around to 33 different countries, spreading God's word through her music. And she just loves the Gideons, and she just wanted everybody to know that. Brothers and sisters, God has allowed us to partner with the church distributing scriptures in schools when it's possible, colleges. This coming Tuesday, the Page County Gideons are going over to help the Harrisonburg Gideons at JMU give out scriptures to the students on campus. We do that every year to kind of help because they can't do it alone, because there's a lot of students roaming around JMU. So we're going Tuesday morning 
to help with that distribution. And then also at the fair here, we have a booth at the Page County Fair. And this year we gave out 228 scriptures to the students from fifth grade to the 12th grade. To the hospitals, police department, fire personnel, nurses, doctor's offices, wherever we can possibly put a scripture, we try to do it. And we also go to the jails, and JR does a great job with that. We give out, he gives out scriptures at the jail whenever he's there. And uh, any time that there's a opportunity at the jail, they obviously need help. And some of the pastors and the Gideons around go to the jail to give them a scripture if they would like one. It's never forced, but here it is if you'd like it. How can you help? Prayer is key. And we appreciate all your prayers, especially all those Gideons that are going through all the countries and some places are dangerous, but they go anyway to give out God's word. You can also financial support, and we appreciate that. And we also have cards that are available that you can use in memory of, you can send a card and make a donation to the Gideons International in memory of someone. And one of these Bibles is only $5. And you never know how many lives it might touch. Might be another John Price, who's 13, that took it and became a pastor. You never know. These are about $1.50. And also, we handed out this morning the little bulletin. It's got some information in here about the Gideons. And at some point, at any time, you'd like to make a donation to the Gideons, you may do so. And like I said, prayer is important. But the churches make it possible for us to do the things that we do. And I'd like to thank y'all for allowing me to share the work of the Gideons with you. And God bless you. And there's never been another king like we have. Thank you, Eddie. Um, if, if you recall, I think he said uh, since, since the, the beginning, roughly what, 2.7 billion Bibles? Is that about right? 2.7 billion Bibles have gone out. And you don't know, you'll, you'll never physically see the impact that I, that has on the world. And that's only possible. That's only possible because of your giving, church giving, being able to give $5, $1.50 for a Bible it goes out to touch somebody's life, a 13-year-old, changes his life, who later becomes a pastor and, and leads, you don't know, hundreds and hundreds of people to Christ because of a dollar fifty, because of five dollars. At this time, I'm going to ask uh, ushers to come forward. We're going to um, take up a love offering for the Gideons. Again, uh, if you... Uh, have a, a check you want to make it out to Gideon's or Gideon's International it'd be greatly appreciated let's pray over the uh, the love offering dear Heavenly Father I thank you so much again for the Gideon's I thank you for their ministry I thank you for the uh, the, the men and ladies that go out dear Heavenly Father and work to spread that news, to spread that dollar fifty Bible or the $5 Bible, dear Heavenly Father. We don't know the difference that makes, but we are thanks, so thankful for those individuals, Lord, and also so thankful that we can fund that, that we can give towards that. So, Lord, I want to 
pray a bold prayer over that money. I want to pray a bold prayer over the Gideons, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you put them in courageous, bold, strong positions, dear Heavenly Father, to impact you. Lord, I pray that exact same thing over the monies that was just taken. I pray that it would be put in places to impact you throughout this world, dear Heavenly Father. But, Lord, we're thinking about this county. You know, I, I prayed and have been praying the last couple of weeks that you would start a revival, Lord, and let it start with us. Let it start with this church. Let it start with these individuals, Lord. I pray, Lord, that a revival would begin, and, I, and it would begin there in the Gideons here locally, Lord. I thank you so much that we can pray these prayers. We ask your blessings over their funds. In Jesus' name, amen. Since, um, since 1933, the very first Sunday in October is designated as World Communion Sunday. It began with a Presbyterian preacher in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania by the name of Dr. Hugh Thomas Kerr. Pastor Kerr said this, he said, it was an attempt to bring churches together in a service of Christian unity so that everyone would know and understand how important the church as a whole is and how each congregation is interconnected with one another. Donald Kerr was asked this question, said, how did the idea of world communion Sunday spread from the very first service to the worldwide practice that we know it is today? And this is what he said. He said, the concept spread very slowly at the beginning. People did not give it a whole lot of thought. It was during the Second World War that the Spirit caught hold. He said, because we were trying to hold the world together. Worldwide communion symbolizes the effort to hold things together in a spiritual sense. He says it emphasized that we are one in the spirit and in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Today, I want you to think about this. Today is the day when all Christians across the world not just the county or the state. I'm talking about the entire world. We're all celebrating oneness in Christ with all our brothers and sisters. We're not focused on denominations or differences or traditions. Instead, we all come together on this day to remember what our Lord Jesus Christ did for us. And we celebrate that we are a part of his church, his bride. So I want you to imagine with me what that looks like today. Take a second, let that sink in. Everywhere across the globe, Christians all over the globe are celebrating World Communion Sunday. There are some Christians worshiping and taking communion in, in a grand cathedral. Some maybe are in a mud hut out in the jungle. Some are taking communion in a one-roomed country church, while others are sharing in the body and the blood of Christ in somebody's home. And I don't doubt some are hiding in a basement in a communist country somewhere, risking jail time so that they can do what we're getting ready to do. We don't have a care in the world. We're not threatened. Christians all over the globe are coming together today to recognize the sacrifice our Lord Jesus Christ made for us. And we're doing it as one body, one church, the body of Christ. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your son. 
We thank you so much for sending your son to visit this sinful world to save us. Lord, we thank you so much for the gift of salvation. Lord, today, right here, right now, we come to your table. We come here today to remember what your son did for us. Lord, we come to remember the agony that he suffered on our behalf. I think about all the different ways, Lord, that we could repay you for that, but we can't. We'll never be able to. So, Lord, we spend the rest of our lives showing our appreciation to you, thanking you, honoring you, glorifying you, proclaiming you as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, I'm going to ask the deacons to pass out the bread and the cup. First Corinthians eleven twenty three through twenty six says this: For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, "This is my body, which is done for you. Do this in remembrance of me." And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, "This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink of it, in remembrance." of me for whenever you eat of this bread and you drink of this cup you proclaim the lord's death until he comes before we get into this i want to take a a, a moment of silence take a few minutes for all of us to bow your heads close your eyes and use this time to search your hearts search your minds ask for forgiveness Is there any sins in your life that's keeping you from that close, intimate relationship with God? This is a very, very special time. It's a very, very holy time. And it's one that we don't take lightly. We shouldn't take lightly. Let me me read you a little bit more detail with your heads bowed and your eyes closed. I want you to think about this. 1 Corinthians 11, 26 through 29 says this, For as often as you eat of this bread and you drink of this cup you, cup you proclaim the lord's death until he comes now this next part of the scripture with every head bowed and every eye closed is talking about what you're doing right here and right now it says this therefore whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the lord but let a man examine himself that's what we're doing examine himself And so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup, for he who eats and drinks, eats and drinks judgment on himself, if he does not judge the body correctly. So right here, right now, as you're sitting there and your head is bowed and you're praying, we're praying out of respect for the God of the universe, our Father. We're praying and giving honor and glory for the sacrifice that he made for you and I. Take this time to talk to God. Search your heart and your mind. And if there needs to be forgiveness, ask, then ask. Ask for the forgiveness of that sin that's in your life. We'll take a minute or two and then I'll follow up with a closing prayer.
Oh, Father, we are so thankful. So thankful for this opportunity to, well, to say thank you. Thank you for the sacrifice that you made for us. Thank you that we can have a relationship with you. A relationship with the God of the universe. Lord, I want to thank you for your perfect plan, even though we don't always understand it or get it. We just have to trust in you. Father, we ask for forgiveness for the shortcomings as, as, as Christians. Lord, we ask for forgiveness for any sin in our lives. And Lord, we seek to follow you closer every single day day lord give us that strength lord and i pray give us that conviction and i pray it in jesus name amen all of us all of us who are in love and fellowship and the family of god and earnestly repent of our sins who humbly put our trust in christ who desire his help that we might walk in that newness of life. We're invited here to his table to draw near to God and receive this holy communion. This cracker, this cracker represents Christ's body which was broken for you. It says Jesus took a loaf of bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to them and he said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's pray over this. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray your blessings on this sacred symbol of your body. Lord, may we receive this and eat this in faith. And at the same time, recalling the life and the death of your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we can't thank you enough for your eternal gift of salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. As we get ready to partake in this, please repeat after me. The bread which we eat is the communion of the body of Christ. This grape juice, simple little juice, but it represents Christ's blood that was shed for us. That blood was shed for you. Think about it like this. If you were the only person on this earth, Christ still would have gone to that cross. And all of that blood was shed for you, shed for me. Jesus said, the cup that's poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink in it, remembrance of me. And, when we, and we are reminded, for as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. That's hope. Let's pray over this blessing. Oh, Lord, we are so thankful again for the love that you have poured out for all of us. Lord, we ask your blessings on the sacred symbol of the blood of Jesus Christ. We know that our eternity would not be possible, Lord, without your shed blood. And we thank you again in Jesus' name. Amen. As we get ready to drink, please repeat after me. The cup which we drink is the communion of the blood of Christ. Please remember, please don't ever forget. We've got a lot of things going on in our lives. Rocky roads, ditches, a lot of hills, sometimes mountains. But there was no greater sacrifice than this. 
Let's close in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, again, we're so deeply thankful, so deeply grateful to have a place at your table to share in this sacred food. Lord, we pray that you, that we, excuse me, Lord, that we bless you in everything that we do, that you're glorified in our lives, in the life of this church. We love you so very much. In Jesus' name, amen.